the issue of privacy is at the heart of an amazing amount of effort that goes on in Google to protect it. And there's a, if you've read about the company, there's a very simple statement. It's don't be evil. It's a, it's a norm and a value that in that company is extraordinary. And if the management were ever to try to be evil, to like use information uh, of a personal nature from the users that would be sort of nefarious in terms of giving Google an advantage, I believe almost everyone in engineering would just turn off their screens and not work. Really? The, the passion about protecting personal information is very great. The, you know, Google will obey the laws in the jurisdiction it operates in. It will advocate strongly for changes if it sees the need for changes, but it is, it's, it's a company that will obey mm. the law. Now, when and you first told me that, which was our first conversation, that's a, one of the first questions I asked was about Google, you know, the, the information Google has. I spend a lot of time for clients, you know, with, with SEO stuff, looking at the information that they're actually able to garner. Think about, think about just even looking up stock quotes that Google is, is offering. And, you know, on a Monday, there's patterns of people looking at stocks, and then on a Tuesday, there's ups and downs of that stock. And I'm sure they can reverse engineer and come up with, you know, trends and, and make purchasing decisions of the stocks. Just, just that alone, that's a tiny thing, not to mention new industries uh, that to invest in and um, even destinations that are becoming popular before anyone knows that they're popular. Right. And uh, it, it is really, for me, and I'm sure for a lot of people, good to know it, someone at your level at Google feels safe. Well, Google has the trust of the bulk of the people in the world who use it. Not everyone, but the bulk. And that's really probably the number one asset the company has. Mm -hmm. If you could posit that trust would be lost, that's it. Yeah. So the company earns that trust every day. Yeah. I really believe this. It's and it's a, it, it's a conflict of interest, though, intrinsically, when you think about they're indexing millions and millions of websites, and their primary source of revenue is through sponsored ads and results. So there's 10 organic results, and right. then there's the sponsored ones on the right and at the top. So they can see who's coming up on the organic results and who at the same time is paying right. to be on this first page and make a potentially, like let's take a scenario, let's say GM pays them five million a month for, for advertising, for pay-per-click, and they invest a million of that, you know, GM does, uh, a million separate budget to do organic results. If GM is getting on the organic results, maybe they reduce their budget with Google on paid results. I think Google is gonna notice that. Right, but, uh, but you're, 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 you're setting up a setup that you're describing a form of evil if Google then kind of acts on that. And that's the question. Do they and really? The, the, they really don't act on it. There's, I believe, I believe, at least in the Google I know, there's a deep understanding that if Google abuses its privilege, mm -hmm. um, A, it would be immoral, <laughs> illegal probably, and would result in a loss of trust, and most of the engineers would leave. I certainly would. And not to mention, I think a, a multi-billion, multi-multi-billion dollar industry would begin to fall. Oh no, somebody else would pick up the, uh, you'd have these high quality operations that purport to be search engines, um, that would pick up the slack and probably be really sleazy. There's a number of them around, but I won't quote names. <laughs> You had a follow-up question? Yeah. What I was actually looking for was not um, should we trust Google, but right. with the information that's provided there, how, um, is there, are there any steps being taken to prevent the public from misusing, the people that use Google, 
from misusing that information, from finding information that you may not want out there. The persistence of information is a really important thing, and sometimes there are things that should go away. Google makes it, can make it impossible to do that. Are there, are you guys looking at that and considering it? Well, I, I think that there's been a lot of thought about that, and uh, Gmail is an example of a system that has a deep mm, tension, dichotomy, if you will, there's a word for that, sort of an opposing issue. The notion on, Google, on Gmail was all your Gmail goes in, you never have to delete anything. And yeah. the, the initial Kool-Aid, uh, Kool-Aid, if you go back to Jamestown, that's the reference, the purple Kool-Aid, was that Gmail was a write-only memory. You put stuff into it, but you couldn't delete it. And this would be wonderful, and therefore all of your email would always be available for you to search all the time, anytime. That's cool. That's really neat. Until you start thinking about it. Okay. But from an engineering I mean, point of view? No. How many messages might come in from your family? Yeah. Or, you know, a friend or... You, you, you make a really dumb remark because you've had a little bit too much to drink. Or someone and, you met on you the know, plane. You know. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it won't work to save everything. And yet you build into computer systems these amazing backup systems because it would be pretty rude if Google were to lose my mail file. It's about 10 gigabytes. It's basically all the mail I've ever experienced and had since I've been on email going back to the 70s. It's wow. all there. Um, and um, But if I want to delete something, I want it to go away. Hey, but and that, so, th so there's a tension here, and it's hard. They're going to have, and then they're going to have, you're going to have your voicemails all there right. too. I mean, what's yeah. next? Is it maybe maybe there's going to be a new service that says uh, record every conversation I have too right. and store it? Well, it, what it really boils down to is probably a concept. It's a legal concept that hasn't been perfected yet, which is all this digital stuff. Who owns it? Does it belong to Google or is it mine? If I publish it to the world in the form of information that can be searched legitimately, mm -hmm. then it's probably in some sense owned by the common good in some sense, right? Mm -hmm. That's what we all look at when we look at the web, 15 billion web pages or so that Google has. The people who put those web pages out by and large decided to put that information out for the benefit of all of us. Okay. But the private stuff doesn't belong to you if you can figure it out. If it's my personal information, it's mine. Mm -hmm. um, that needs to be dealt with at a legal level. I don't think it's ever really been quite perfected. Uh, and I believe that my medical records are mine. They're not my doctor's, they're mine. Yeah. And I can choose to publish them or not or share them as I see fit, but that's my right. And that's not Google's right, it's not Facebook's right. And I don't like any company that sucks me into investing my life in them, but I can't get it out. For instance, if you're an AOL user, you can't forward your mail. So if you've got 20 years on AOL and you've got a huge network on AOL, you're stuck. Hmm. You can't move to Gmail. You have to get your whole network moved over by telling them, well, I've changed my email, blah, 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 blah. So that's, that's just a little teeny yeah. bit of a problem, but it's a yeah, big people, problem. It's an important issue. People take it for granted. There's a, there's a huge uh, hoopla with terms and conditions on Facebook a while back, Yeah. whether or not you owned it. And then they clear it up and said, no, no, you own it. But I personally still post anything I post on Facebook, I'll swear first. Right. To know that it, you know, there's a precedence. Right. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, and I don't follow that. The the Europeans generally have a better perfected idea of personal information rights, and companies are obligated in Europe to provide a lot more protection about personal information. Mm -hmm. it's, it's 
it's still a little